Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to add an image button to your React Native app. So first I'm going to just start with a style for my image button, so the image that will be on the button, and I'm just going to give it a height and a width. I'm just going to add my image first to the screen so you can see it, and then I'll go and work on making that pressable. So I'm going to assign that style that I've just defined, so styles.image, and I'm going to give that a source, and I'm just going to use one of the... Um, the image is already available, so inside that Assets folder. So I'm just going to use the logo from inside there. Oh, and I must have gone that name wrong, so let me just double check what that name of the asset was. Okay, it's icon.png instead of logo.png. So if I go ahead and update that, uh, you also need to import image, obviously, from React Native so that you can have that image component. So now you can see that little image on screen, but it's not pressable or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pressable component to make it pressable. You could use touchable opacity, and that is like a little bit simpler in terms of code but it's recommended to use pressable as it gives you a bit more flexibility and extensibility if you want to do more things with the um with the pressable component in the future like handle long presses and stuff like that And that pressable component can have an on press, um, and then I can specify a function for that. It can also have a style, and it, the style can actually use whether the button is currently being pressed or not to determine what style should be used. So I'm going to use that pressed function, the pressed value, to determine whether I'm going to have a slightly opaque. Um, image or not and that's just going to give us like a little bit of a differentiation between when the button is being pressed and when it's not. So you can see if it's pressed I'm going to have 0.5 opacity and you'll see that on screen when I press on it. That wasn't working for some reason so I'm just going to make sure that it's like really explicitly returning that opacity. So now you can see that when I click on that image, it highlights it. I can make that even more obvious if I wanted to change that opacity down to zero when it's pressed. So you can see it's slightly obvious, but I'll just make it a bit more obvious. So by setting that opacity to zero when it's pressed, it won't be visible when it's pressed. It'll make quite an obvious highlighting. So now I'm going to go ahead and add the on press function for when I press on that pressable component. And all I'm going to do is just console log that the button was pressed. If you were to do this in a real app, obviously you'd be doing whatever you wanted to do when the button was pressed. So you can see that showing up in the console. Now I'm adding a folder for my components. I'm going to extract that image button out into its own file. So that it's easily reusable and I can use it in lots of different places in my code. Just going to copy and paste this whole thing and then get discard what I don't need. So when you have a separate component, you'll probably want to pass things like properties in to handle the like image that's actually used, maybe the style of the image and whatever the on press function would be, would be quite common for this image button component. Um, that basically means that you can reuse it and pass in whatever you want that's relevant to the situation, but the actual logic of the component stays the same. So anything that's sort of 
is variable. You can pass in as a property and everything that stays the same can just be inside that component JavaScript file. So I'm going to import my image button so I can use it. And I can go ahead and add it to my app. On press, I'm going to pass in a function. The function is just going to basically say that it's um, being pressed from a component. That's just to differentiate it from the existing um, function, which is press button. See so yeah, our console log button is component when the image button is pressed. I also want to pass in a source and I also want to pass in the image style. So the image style is just going to come from that style, style sheet. So I'll just pass in styles.image. And the source is just going to match what I've specified against my existing image. And yeah, if I had different image buttons, I could pass in a different source and then that would update accordingly and I'd have different images on my image button. For example, I might have one that's a trash can and one that's like a pencil for edit. I'm just going to move these onto different lines so it's quite easy to read. I can go ahead and save that. But you can see if I press that, it doesn't actually do anything yet, and that's because I haven't passed those, handled those properties inside this image button.js file. So I'm just going to rename my function to align with what my component name is and also specify the properties up here that I've been passed in. That will allow me to access them inside the image button function, and then I can just handle it as needed. So on press, I'm just going to use the on press function that's been passed in from the properties. For the image style, I'll use the image style passed in from the properties. And the source, I'm going to use the image style, the source passed in from the properties. So you can see now it still looks the same, but when I go to press it, it should say button is component, and you can see that showing in the terminal. If I update the style outside of the component, you should see that the image button updates accordingly. You can see that it decreased in size when I changed the size. If I were to update the source, it should change the image as well, but I don't have a different um, image that I could use there, so I'm just going to leave it as is. You can actually put whatever you want inside the pressable and you can actually put multiple components inside the pressable. So you might actually want to have like text alongside your image button just to give the user a bit more prompting. So I'm going to just put press me. Then you can just go into your image button and add the text accordingly. So I'm adding my text in and I'm going to pass it in as a property and use that value from the property. So the property was text, so I've put that inside that function. And there you go, I can, you can see I'm using it. I haven't imported text, so I need to import that from React Native. And when I save, you can see there's press me down there. But often you might find that you want to align the, the image and the text in a row. You wouldn't, it's not super common to have vertical Button, so I'm going to go ahead and just create a new style that's going to allow me to do that. While I'm doing that, I'm just going to refactor the style from the from the pressable out into the style sheet. So I'm going to have a pressed and not pressed for the opacity. And I'm going to just fast forward through this because it's not super vital that you see how this is done. So you can see that I've 
got my styles refactored now but now I need to go ahead and do the alignment inside as a row so I'm adding a new style that's going to allow me to specify that I want it laid out as a row and I'm calling that row you're going to want to use the flex direction property and set it to row and you're going to want to align the items in a minute but I'll just show you what it will look like as a row So by returning an array, it's going to apply multiple styles from that style sheet to the button. I also want to specify the style for the text, and I'm going to do that because I want to have like a little margin. I don't want it right up against the image. So for the text, I'm going to have a margin of 16. You can see that it's lined up in a row now and looking a little bit better, but still can look a little bit better if we center the items in the row. So I'm going to just do that now. If I go ahead and save that, you can see that's all aligned well and it's all in a row and I can press on it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have, please like and subscribe for more content. All my code will be available on GitHub.